Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, Revo Fit, Revo Lock, uh, Quick Fit Laser um, as they pertain to upper limb. Um, I'm going to be kind of bouncing between uh, lab, uh, in person, uh, and PowerPoint. Um, if you have any questions during the presentation, uh, feel free to you know raise your hand, like Lauren said, or uh, you can save your question for the end. Uh, it's not a very big group today, so uh, feel free to to, to um, raise your hand if you want to uh, ask a question or discuss anything. Um, happy to stop and, and answer those questions. Uh, at the end of the uh, presentation, uh, we're just going to be talking about upper limb today. But at the end, uh, if you want uh, credits, um, we will be sending you a, a link after the uh, presentation. And there on that link, you'll have uh, the quiz um, where you can take the quiz and get two credits, uh, two CE credits uh, through ABC. So perfect. And uh, just to follow up on that, that is currently specific. Um only applicable to the US. Um, we are working on Canada. So if anyone is joining us from Canada, we're working on uh, trying to get approval for some MCEs for you guys as well. So stay tuned if that's the case and, and that goes through with OPC, we will follow up with everyone in Canada uh, to open up that quiz to you guys as well. Okay, let's get started here. Okay. So today, like I said, we're going to be talking about uh, mainly about upper limb solutions. Um, kind of the, the, the intro to, for a lot of people uh, with upper limb is using the RevoLock lanyard. Um, it's our uh, mechanical suspension uh, system. Uh, it can be used for upper limb and for lower limb. Um, it's totally uh, waterproof, completely submersible. Uh, if you use it in salt water, you do want to rinse it out uh, after use. Um, it uses a mid-power dial. Um, which is a little bit different than our Revo Fit, which has a high power dial. Uh, the Revo Fit dial, or the Revo Lock dial, or the mid power dial, um, has a two to one mechanical advantage. So it's not as strong as the Revo Fit dial, uh, but it, uh, the uptake of the lace is much faster, which is why we use it. It's a little bit smaller dial, a little bit lower profile. Um, and if you're using it for upper limb, uh, we do sell a separate upper limb threaded insert uh, that you'd want to get uh, that is adaptable. Uh, to the upper limb liners. We like using the, the lock, uh, the Revo lock for pulling people uh, into the socket rather than ha having to like stuff their arm into a, into a, a socket. So uh, if you want to elongate the limb, uh, people have a hard time maybe with a pin lock uh, or uh, lining up a pin. Um, sometimes, you know, having uh, anatomical suspension may be too difficult for the patient. So they need a secondary or a, a primary suspension. Uh, unit that they can add to the socket. Uh, so we oftentimes will go with the uh, Revo lock lanyard uh, for uh, for a variety of reasons, but mainly for elongating the limb, pulling it into position. Uh, also, the build height of the Revo lock is only two and a half centimeters, so about one inch. Um, so the build height is is quite short. So if you have a long limb uh, and and length is is a bit of an issue, uh, this is a nice solution for for those uh, applications. Here's a, just a, a quick picture of, of the smaller threaded insert. Uh, and again, this, this system um, is waterproof. Uh, it's completely submersible. Uh, it also has an airlock on it. So um, there's no whooshing sound that happens within the socket. So once the socket's on, once the threaded insert, you can see in this picture here, once that threaded insert, those O-rings are engaged with the distal housing, uh, you've created an air seal. So no air can escape in or out. Um, a little bit different than, you know, uh, using it for lower limb. With lower limb, that airflow is, seems to be a, a much bigger problem. You know, as people are walking, they're kind of whooshing the air out or, or hissing the air out. Upper limb, it's not such a big deal because they're not weight bearing. Obviously, they're not walking on their arm. Um, but still having an, an airlock is still a nice, uh, uh, nice feature uh, for the upper limb devices. Um, most people are using the Revo Fit 2, the lamination kits, uh, for upper limb uh, adjustable solutions. Um, it's our, our, our biggest dial. It's our most powerful dial. Uh, it's got a four to one mechanical advantage. Um, that equates to about 220 pounds of line tension. So which, it's very, very strong. Um, we can use it for laminated uh, purposes. You could also use the diagnostic kit uh, and, and add it to the outside of a socket if you're doing maybe a check socket or uh, trying a new design. Uh, you could use the, the RevoFit diagnostic kit. 
uh, attach to the outside of the socket and wrap it with fiberglass to lock it into place. Um, but oftentimes we're using these for sports arms. Uh, we're using uh, the Revo fit uh, just for as a suspension technique, uh, which we'll get into a little bit later. Uh, but Revo fit too is really the main kit that we use for upper limb. Uh, people often ask if we have a smaller kit, um, and we do. We do have a smaller kit. Kit the, the Quick Fit Lacer is a smaller dial, uh, less power, um, but it's a rivet on. It's a rivet on kit. It's it's used for shoes mainly, uh, for leather gauntlet AFOs. Um, for soft goods typically. Um, it's typically, the quick fit's typically not used on uh, hard devices, but we do use them sometimes on pediatrics, which we'll show you here shortly. So some of the indications uh, of use for our, our system. Obviously, volume fluctuations. Um, arms fluctuate volumes uh, just like legs do. Um, maybe not as drastic or not as much, but they certainly do fluctuate in volume. You know, the whole body sometimes is retaining water. Or, uh, or losing water um, depending on hormonal changes or activity or heat or uh, depending on what's going on. Um, but volume changes are, are, are a pretty big deal, even with upper limb. Changes in activity levels. So some people, you know, they wanna hop on a bike um, or they wanna go uh, play a sport, go kayaking or something. Uh, they wanna have the ability to tighten that device uh, if they're becoming more active. So a lot of devices that we've made are sport devices uh, where, you know, they can have a, a relaxed fit for, um, you know, when they're not active and then when, when they become active or they're engaging in a certain sport, they can tighten it down and create a really a solid uh, fit, very tight fit. Um, we use it for socket levering issues. Uh, you know, sometimes, you know, with a transhumeral or even a, a transradial uh, prosthesis, um, you have, a, you know, maybe a heavy electronic elbow, maybe a wrist uh, a rotator, maybe a you know, electronic hand, um, those, all those things, uh, you know, th there's a fair bit of weight involved with those devices, <clears throat> especially with the elbows. Um, so levering within the socket can be an issue. Um, you know, so just dis uh, distal humeral levering, you know, inside the socket is an, is an issue, uh, especially with the heavy weight, especially when they're doing things out kind of uh, in the transverse plane. Um, so if we can kind of lock onto the bone, <clears throat> create a muscle lock or a bone lock, and decrease some of that levering inside the socket, <clears throat> then um, you know we hopefully we've solved some some problems there. Uh, we can also it can also help with a socket rotation. Um, you know we can put in uh, narrow struts uh, within a frame of a socket, transhumeral or even a transradial, uh, and we can again key into the bone or key onto the muscle bellies and and create uh, what we call a you know a, a muscle lock or a bone lock uh, that helps with levering and it also helps with rotation. So again, you know, when you have a, a heavy electronic elbow, uh, you know, wrist and a hand, uh, and they, you know, uh, they, they uh, abduct uh, their arms, uh, you know, sometimes those things can just rotate on their own. The sockets can rotate just because there's so much weight. So if we can key into the bone and key into those muscle bellies, uh, we, we can create a much better fit. Um, adjustable electrode contact sites. Um, so we've done this, and this is kind of an old, old socket that, that I did years and years ago with a much smaller dial. That's our quick fit laser dial. Uh, I laminated the system in. We don't have a lamination kit for the quick fit laser. It's, it's add-on, but some people make their own uh, lamination kits for the quick fit laser. But as you can see here, we've, we've created adjustable uh, electrode sites. So by uh, putting the electrodes here on these panels, we can crank these down. And depending on how much padding we put on the inside, we can get more compression on those, on those muscles. One of the issues with, with upper limb, especially with myoelectrics, um, you know, people get fatigued uh, at the end of the day. Um, and sometimes they'll lose volume in, in their arms and they'll start getting gaps, okay? And if you have a gap in a myoelectric, if there's any kind of airspace between the skin and the electrode, oftentimes uh, it'll cause some erratic behavior. So the wrist will start rotating or the hand will start opening and closing inadvertently. Um, especially when you're getting up and you know, doing things you know, high above your head, uh, you get some gapping uh, and then all of a sudden the hand just starts uh, acting uh, erratically. So if you can have good contact all day, um, an adjustable contact through the, uh, through the dial, uh, then we can uh, reduce a lot of fatigue for those patients. Uh, we can have a much better fit, uh, very, it's more of a precise fit, um, and they just simply don't have to struggle so much to get, uh, to get the device to move. Um, so 
we are seeing more and more people putting uh, adjustable panels over electrode sites, whether the, the panel itself uh, has the electrodes on it, or if you have a flexible insert and you have the panel or you have the electrode in the flexible insert, you can simply make a, a panel in the frame over the top of that electrode just so it pushes on that electrode and gives really good contact with the skin. With the skin. Okay. Um, and then we also use it as a primary suspension. So any kind of joint disarticulation, uh, we're going to use it uh, for elbow disartics, wrist disartics. We'll use it for, you know, uh, supracondylar or, you know, uh, um, suspension uh, above the olecranon. Um, and we also use it for adjustable harnessing. So we have uh, the uh, quick fit straps and those straps are often used for uh, uh, harnessing for uh, transhumeral and uh, shoulder disarticulation patients. Some of the contraindications. Um, so limb sensitivity. So if you have skin grafts, neuromas, neuropathy, you know, really bony areas, uh, a lot of scarring, uh, sometimes they're not a candidate because they can't really tolerate more pressure. Um, not to say that they're totally excluded because sometimes when they have really soft, sensitive skin, they want an easy way to get it on. So if we can make an easy way of getting it on, say for example, creating a, you know, an olecranon suspension. So we can open this up. This is all flexible plastic. They can easily slide their, their arm through here and then they simply close this and lock it into position, okay? Creates a really solid, strong suspension, but makes it really easy to get it on and off, okay? So you can use it as a primary suspension um, or secondary suspension, depending on what, what your needs are. Uh, also, you know, some other contraindications, you know, poor circulation. Um, you know, you don't want them to squeeze their arm to the point where they're gonna lose circulation, obviously. Uh, mental awareness, mental cognition. Some people are just not cognitive. You know, they're just not, they're not fully aware. Uh, maybe they have some dementia. Uh, or some other mental uh, health um, issues where they're just not a good candidate. You know, some people, they just think, you know, if tight is good, tighter must be better. Um, and, and that's not always the case. And so if that's the kind of patient that, that, you're, that, that you're maybe fitting, uh, you might think twice about that in terms of the, the cognitive part. Um, you don't want people to over tighten, compromise any kind of circulation. So just keep that in mind when you're, when you're selecting uh, these, these patients. Also, the cosmesis, uh, the build height of the dial. The dial is, you know, depending on which dial you're, 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 you're choosing, but the RevoFit dial has about a one inch build height. So it's pretty big, um, pretty tall. Uh, oftentimes, we will bury that in the forearm um, shell uh, so that just the dial head is sticking out. Or in other cases, you know, we can, uh, sometimes we can just place the dial on the posterior aspect of the socket, um, also in this position here. So that's also a good spot to kind of hide it and get it out of the way. Uh, but as you'll see in some of these uh, uh, later photos, um, oftentimes we're putting the, the dial down uh, in, into the forearm area. Some of the user advantages, um, on-demand adjustability. Um, so people that are active, you know, they want to, uh, you know, they're maybe in the office all day, but then afterwards, you know, maybe they go play basketball or they go weightlifting or they go to the gym or they, let me go ride a bike. You know, having the ability to tighten that socket when needed, um, you know, to have a more secure fit uh, is, is pretty beneficial. You know, they don't have to take their arm off, take their harness off, put a sock on to tighten it up. They can simply, if they can, you know, if they can reach it, they can turn it, uh, they can uh, adjust it. So they can adjust it through their clothing. They don't have to expose anything um, and uh, makes it uh, um, very quick and easy adjustment. Micro adjustable, so each click is one millimeter. So it's very micro. Um, we can improve socket fit and function, hopefully. That's the, that's the goal anyways. Easier on and off. Um, so sometimes downing can be a real struggle, especially if they have really high trim lines. So if you have high trim lines above the epicondyles, uh, maybe for a transradial, um, sometimes we can make that adjustable so that they have an easier time getting it on. Because sometimes, you know, that's just, those bones are really sensitive um, and, uh, you know, we just want to make room for them be able to open up the socket, put the socket on, and then close down over the top of it. Single-handed use, okay. Um, we've even put it on bilaterals where they've 
we've positioned the dial so that they can just run the dial along the, the top surface of a, of a table or the edge of a uh, edge of a cabinet or something. Um, so uh, you need to have, you know, we typically say you need to have at least one hand to tighten the dial, but that's not necessarily always the case. Sometimes you can go without, you know, you can do bilateral uh, adjustable sockets. Um, there's a little bit of, there's, there's some nuances that you have to take into consideration in terms of releasing and tightening. Uh, we've done some things uh, with little loops and things where people can, can pop the dials, uh, not having to grab them. They can just loop the, the dial around something and, and just pull, and it automatically will pull the dial and release it. So there are a few little tips and tricks there. If you have a bilateral, feel free to call us. I'm happy to talk you through some of those tips and tricks uh, if, if you need adjustability for those bilateral patients. And like quick, we said earlier, oh, quick question for you here. Um, is it possible to use the RevoFit technology to design uh, customized limbs? Um, so it's it's a bit of a vague question. So if I'm if I if you want to chime in and raise your hand and ask in more detail, you're welcome to. Uh, but uh, currently, uh, that's and I and I'm I don't want to say your name incorrectly. Mayor, is it? Um, do you want to raise your hand and I can unmute you? Thank you. Hello. Hi there. Hi. Uh, my name is Mayur. I'm the I'm actually a robotics researcher from England. So I'm actually working on a project which is more like a smart prosthetic limb by some advanced smart sensors. And I've been following this technology for quite a while. Uh, I just wanted to know: is it possible to use that uh, level fit fitting technology to for the research purposes, just to create something, uh, some new type of smart prosthetic limbs? Yeah, absolutely. Um... Happy to, to share with you our technology. Uh, if you're on the research side, it doesn't, you don't have to be in the clinical, you know, seeing patients. Um, but if you're doing research okay. and you're, you're in, this, in the prosthetic space, uh, happy to support you uh, and uh, get you some product uh, and, and talk with you in terms of design or if you need any information on fabrication or anything like that. So absolutely. Just reach oh, out. That's to us. lovely. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Absolutely. Reach out to us and, and we'll we'll connect the dots there. So sure. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. So yeah, we'll, we'll follow we'll send a follow-up email post web post webinar and we'll include all of the contact details. So that way you'll be able to get in touch sure. with Joe if you have any specific questions. Okay. Okay, definitely. Right. That will be lovely. All right. Thank Perfect. you so much. Thank you. Okay. So um other, some other user advantages, obviously, with adjustable systems, we can reduce some of those visits to the prosthetist. Um, patients aren't so reliant upon you, the prosthetist, uh, for every little thing that happens. Same thing goes with, with lower limb. You know, we see it a lot with lower limb where you know, people are fluctuating volume, uh, changing their activities, you know, they're gaining weight, they're losing weight, um, their limbs are maturing or atrophying. Um, people are constantly changing. Uh, same thing goes for upper limb, you know, people are changing uh, and if they can, you know, tighten the fit on their own and, and not have to make an appointment to come in and see you and have a pad placed or have you, you know, tighten up the socket somewhere, um, you can reduce some of those, you know, uh, non-reimbursable events that happen. Um, a lot of those events, you know, we don't get paid for. Uh, we do them because we want the patients to be happy. We want the devices to fit. We want them to be able to use the devices, but oftentimes we can't bill for those for those appointments. So, if we can reduce a few of those non-reimbursable events, um, we think it's you know not only beneficial for the the patient. Obviously, they don't have to make the time to come in and see you, but it's also beneficial for the business. So, some business advantages, um, you know, empowering patients. We think that's really really powerful to give them a little bit of adjustability. Oh man, it just it goes a long ways. Um, you know, just allowing them to, to tighten and loosen on their own uh, empowers them, and uh, we think that's a good thing. Obviously, you know, like we said earlier, it's not for everybody. Um, if there's some mental health issues, then and maybe they're not a great candidate. Uh, but we think for most patients, uh, it's a great tool to have um, in terms of empowering them. We can reduce some of the so socket fit issues. You know, even with upper, upper limb, people still struggle with fit sometimes. You know, sometimes this is too tight or too loose, you know, depending on water retention or activity or whether it's summer or winter. Um, but if we can reduce some of those socket fit issues, again, we're kind of reducing some headaches, not only for the patient, but also for the clinic. Okay. If you think about how much time it takes to set up an appointment, you know, you have to, 
you know, a patient's got a problem. They call in and they say, hey, I've got a problem. My arm's not fitting. Can I make an appointment? I say, sure, you know, we'll see you next Wednesday. <clears throat> you know, uh, they come in, you know, a week later and they say, you know what? Um, I don't have that problem anymore. And then you say, okay, well then, uh, you know, why'd you come in? Like, oh, I thought I'd come in anyways, just to, you know, just to catch up, you know, and, and, and tell you what was going on. But oftentimes when patients have a problem, they need to have a solution right then. Okay, they can't wait a week because those solutions will come, those, those problems will come and go. All right, so uh, being able to adjust the fit on the fly when they need it is, is super important um, rather than have, having them wait and come in a week later or two weeks later when you have an appointment open uh, for them to, to come in. Um, if we can reduce some of those, we think that's a good thing. Um, we can also reduce some time from the fitting, uh, uh, like from the uh, fitting the uh, original device or the initial device. So if we can reduce some of that time in terms of the definitive, we can get there a little bit sooner. Uh, if we allow for a, a broader range of fit for that device, we might be able to fit those devices, you know, a week or two sooner, um, just because we have a bit of a range, okay? And then just uh, some product differentiation between you uh, and your competitors. So, you know, you can use this as a marketing tool. Uh, happy to support you with that. We've got lots of marketing material, lots of sales sheets and things that you can share with your doctors or referring physicians, PTs, you know, rehab clinics. Uh, happy to share this, this stuff with, with everybody. And you can take that in and say, hey, you know, we do adjustable socket technology. This is what it is. This is what it looks like. This is where we use it. Um, and it's something that you can use to kind of differentiate yourself between you and some of your competitors that maybe aren't doing this. All right, so a couple of case uses here. Um, this is a transradial upper limb. Uh, this patient obviously is using snap electrodes. Um, and uh, they, this guy uh, liked to ride motorcycles and ATVs and you know, heavy equipment basically. Um, so he'd like to have a really secure fit. And as you can see, those trim lines in the picture, they're, they're pretty high. They're above the condyles. Um, and, and oftentimes when you have rigid frame above those condyles, um, man, it can be really difficult to get it on uh, and, and get it off as well. But getting it on can be a real challenge. You know, they have to kind of screwdriver their arm into the, the device. Well, what they did with this device was they, they basically, you know, obviously opened up the areas for the snap electrodes to, to, to connect to. So they have easy access. But what they did was they split the frame down the posterior. And what this did was it allowed the ML, uh, the medial lateral wings of the socket to open and spread, okay? And by the, the, the patient would pop the dial and, and open up the, the ML portion of the socket, get it on really easily, and then crank that thing down. And that would provide a really solid, secure fit, but not be so difficult, you know, with the donning and doffing process. Obviously, he used a gel liner, um, had a flexible insert in there. He used this mostly for donning and doffing, but it also provided some ML compression. And he said it also helped with some rotation control. Um, when, you have some, when you have openings like that, he's got ML openings for the electrodes. He's got a posterior opening. Um, sometimes you have tissue that kind of will pooch out in those openings, uh, expand uh, into those openings. That helps with uh, some socket rotation uh, when you have a tissue expanding um, and, and creating uh, some kind of some resistance to, to rotation. So. Uh, those openings can be good. Um, Randy Alley talks about that a lot with the compression and expansion um, in his hi-fi designs, uh, and they're very, uh, very functional, um, and they serve a great purpose. Um, <clears throat> here's our wrist disarticulation use case. Um, this was uh, uh, this used the quick fit um, uh, laser kit. So as you can see, it's kind of an older version, but uh, you can see it's riveted to the outside. And then there's uh, two guides that you can, you can see one on the lower right side of that picture. The other one you can't see, it's on the opposite side. Uh, but they were just using this simply to increase sus some suspension, just tightening up the socket a little bit uh, in the ML um, with those wires. There's no panels on the socket. It's simply uh, using the wires to wrap around the socket and create a little bit more uh, tightness and a little bit more suspension uh, for this user. But this was kind of an afterthought. It could be added to the outside. Uh, and like I said, the quick fit laser is typically used for shoes and for leather gauntlet AFOs. It's got a much smaller dial, creates about 60 pounds of line tension versus the Revo Fit, which is, like I said, 220 pounds of line tension. So Revo Fit's much stronger, but much bigger as well. So if you want something small 
and you're just doing a little bit of adjustment or maybe just a little bit of open and closing, then you can get away with using the quick fit lacer. And quick question for you, Joe. Sure. Um, we have a prosthetist joining us from Mexico today. Um, right. You had mentioned that the Revo fit uh, could be used in a shoulder disartic fitting. Uh, which designs would you consider as a good option or how could it be fitted for a Mayo SD socket? Um, interesting question. You know, I've not <clears throat> really fit too many shoulder dysartics in my day. Um, it's a pretty rare, you know, amputation level. Um, what we see mostly is people using it in the harnessing, on the harnessing side of things for a shoulder dysartic. So you've created the, the socket itself, and then you're gonna tighten that with a harness. And I've got a picture here shortly that'll, that'll show you uh, that uses a dial for, for tightening. Um, <clears throat> our straps also have buckles on them, so you can easily, with one hand, it's, it's magnetic, so you can latch the buckle and then tighten it really easily. Um, so we, we're seeing that used for, for shoulder disartic uh, harnessing. Um, in terms of RevoFit using it for a um, socket adjustment, um, you know, I don't know, depending on where uh, your electrodes are and what you're trying to control, but I mean, if you, if you need to add compression over the, an electrode, then, simply, then that's obviously a, a good, way, good place to start would be with a RevoFit kit uh, to create that panel over the electrode sites. But shoulder star ticks, I don't know, you know, depending on, on where the electrodes are um, and how you're controlling it, whether it's through a servo or through Mayo, um, you know, there's a, a few things that you could do and, and if you wanted to, um, you could reach out to me and I've got some, some, some pictures that, that aren't in this presentation, um, of some, uh, transhumerals and, uh, shoulder dysartic that I can share those with you. Um, and, and again, the shoulder dysartic is, is mostly harnessing, um, but we might have some photos that could inspire you, uh, in terms of, uh, design. Uh, but sorry, I don't have a lot of a lot of use case in terms of shoulder dysartics. I, I, I something that I don't do very many of, or, or have done very many of, and I haven't seen many uh, uses in terms of uh, the Revo fit. But again, for the harnessing, I think it's a good a good option. Um, wrist disarticulation use case. So this is a sports arm. Uh, this guy was um, it's almost a partial hand, really. Um, <clears throat> And so difficulty donning and doffing, obviously, uh, getting to the, the distal end through the, the tight wrist spot. Um, so we just made a single panel dial, um, single panel uh, RevoFit system with, with a, a high power dial, uh, mostly for donning and doffing. But this guy also did a lot of mountain biking. So uh, we ended up putting some padding on the back side of that panel so that he could increase compression uh, when he was doing the downhill portion of the mountain biking. So uphill, not such a big deal, but when he was downhilling, he'd like to really crank that thing down. He wanted that arm really secure. He did not want that thing coming off. Um, same thing for kayaking. He wanted that thing to be very secure. Um, and so that give, gave him the ability to tighten on the fly uh, when he was, you know, during those, you know, strenuous parts of his exercising. And then he could release the tension when it wasn't so strenuous. Here's a transhumeral. Um, so this has a three panel system and you can see the lateral panel there and the posterior panel. There's also an anterior panel that you can barely see there. But uh, this again can be used for socket rotation, okay. Um, this, this lady had, you know, quite a bit of soft, excessive soft tissue uh, in her uh, arm. And so uh, they really wanted to kind of uh, define and, and really create a, a bone lock or a muscle lock, okay, onto the arm which helps with rotation and levering, okay? Um, as you can see here, the dial placement is anterior distal. Um, you just wanna make sure you have good uh, clearance, good range of motion with the elbow. You wanna make sure you clear that dial and you're not gonna interfere with the range of motion, okay? So I'm not sure if that's a great spot for the dial. I maybe would have put that dial, maybe the anterior medial corner um, might've been a little bit easier and, and maybe wouldn't have restricted the range of motion. Um, if you do straight medial with a the dial, then you have to worry about, you know, snagging the clothing, uh, interfering with the rib cage. Um, so, you know, anterior, anterior medial corner is kind of the best spot. Um, obviously, you know, they have to get to it. So you can't really do a lateral, you know, depending on how big they are, um, you can't do posterior either. Um, so really you're kind of limited to a only a few spots there, uh, where the dial could actually live. 
But this is a nice, nice example of a transhumeral socket uh, with a three panel system. <clears throat> this was a homemade, uh, you know, custom made um, partial hand and they use the dial to control the fingers. Um, you know, so you can do that as well. Again, this is a quick fit laser. It's a much smaller dial. As you can see, it's riveted to the outside. They have the wire going through the string and that's just using, uh, using the dial to control the open and closing uh, of the uh, partial hand. Not a great photo, but here's a, a picture of, of a harness uh, that uses the quick fit um, uh, strap. So as you can see there, the dial uh, anterior, right next to it, there's a uh, magnetic buckle. So obviously, you know, for people with one-handed use, one arm use, uh, having that magnetic buckle is really pretty key. Okay, you don't have to fit, fiddle around with it. Um, you know, it's not a, a, a triple bar uh, strap where you have, a, you have to thread stuff through and, and tighten it and, and reset it to retighten it. Um, this is really simple, really easy. You know, you've got the magnetic part of the buckle snaps together, it finds itself basically. You just get that magnet close to the other end and it'll automatically lock it and engage. And then you have the dial and you've got about three inches of movement of travel in, the, in that tunnel of the dial, uh, I'm sorry, of the strap. So you get about three inches of, of compression that you can do uh, with that, uh, with that uh, strap and with the dial. So a uh, pretty slick system. Uh, really easy to use. Again, you can adjust it through your clothing uh, and having that magnetic buckle uh, is a nice option in terms of, uh, you know, ease of use for the, for the user. Here is, uh, this is uh, Bob, Bob Radosi's arm. Um, Bob's a famous upper limb guru. Um, great guy. Um, it's got a lot of great uh, uh, knowledge with upper limb. Obviously, uh, provides a lot of upper limb uh, product to the market. Uh, this is a beautiful arm um, made by Handspring here in Salt Lake. Um, Chris, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting his last name. Back up, I think, Chris. Um, anyways, beautiful arm. Just use little magnets. So this is a little trap door. Uh, so uh, typically, you, you wouldn't even see this, this opening here where the dial is. Uh, as you can see underneath, there's a little little uh, carbon fiber magnetic, uh, um, I think it's magnets or it's press fit, but it snaps over and covers up that dial. So it looks like a solid forearm. And then he simply just pops that, uh, um, that little trap door open, that thing pops off and he has access to the dial. And the dial controls uh, the suspension over the electronon and the, the posterior aspect of the socket. Can't really see it here, but uh, Bob likes to have uh, a tight uh, electronon suspension. Um, and, you know, again, uh, having tight electronon suspension is difficult for donning and doffing, uh, but if you can make it adjustable, then it makes it a lot easier. So this was an adjustable uh, uh, version here, uh, and he used a, um, this was a lower, pile, lower powered dial. Okay, this is our quick fit laser dial, uh, and he created his own uh, lamination dummy basically for it, which you can do out of silicone. Uh, and he laminated the system in using the RevoFit tubing. Uh, and you can use either the metal lace or the, uh, or, or the soft lace for this. If it's myoelectric, we recommend using the soft lace and not the metal lace, just so you don't want to interfere with the electrodes. Uh, but obviously it's not a myo, this is a, a um, passive arm. And uh, so he uh, got away with uh, using the wire here. But beautiful design, great, great craftsmanship. Uh, kudos to, to Handspring, they did a fantastic job on this one. Um, Quick question for you. Sure. Um, so, and and Carl um, is confirming it is Chris, and I'm gonna I'm not gonna say this last name correctly. B A S C H U K, uh, who is the handspring clinician. So, thank you for that confirmation on the on the clinician's name there, Carl. And then there is a question here as well with the magnets. How strong are the magnets, and could they be used in the gym, for example, rowing? Um, well, these little magnets, which I think that's what they are, um, this it snapped in, it was so precise. I think, pretty sure it was magnets. These could have been pressure fitted, but in terms of this, I don't, I'm not familiar with this system and I'm not sure what Chris used on, on that. Um, but in terms of, you know, magnets for the harnessing, um, not a problem. Uh, they're, 
I don't know what their, their, their pull strength is. Um, something that we can definitely look into. Uh, but man, they're, they're, they're super robust. Um, we, you know, we see them using uh, them on hip dysartic, uh, uh, you know, uh, sockets. So full, you know, loading, full weight bearing. Uh, we see them being used on uh, KAFOs. Uh, we see them used on, you know, spinal products. Um, you know, we see them used on, uh, you know, PDE type, you know, lower limb dynamic uh, braces. So they can take a, you know, a fair bit of, of, of pounding. Uh, they can, you know, full weight bearing, not a problem. Um, in terms of weight lifting, um, if you're using it, you know, harnessed, you know, to a socket and you're pulling, um, I don't think the buckle is going to be your, your, your weak, your weak link. I think it would maybe be the attachment, you know, the rivet or something that's attached to the socket. That's, I'd be more concerned with that than than with the bucket that when then with the buckle uh, itself i hope that answered your question uh again going back we got some my electrics um <clears throat> there's a little bit of metal in, in these these dials okay so you do want to be a little cautious in terms of 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 uh you know positioning around the electrodes uh one of the quiz questions is you know uh is there metal in the dial and can they be used with my electrics um, the, the answer is yes, they can be used with myoelectrics. There is a little bit of metal in there, um, which I didn't put in the quiz question, but there is a, you know, the, the, the post has some metal in it. Um, but it's not enough to really interfere, in, in my opinion, with the electrodes. What would in, interfere more with the electrodes for a myoelectric would be if you use the wire lace, okay? So if you're using a wire lace, uh, you may have interference with some electrodes, um, depending on how sensitive they are. Uh, we often will use the soft lace if we're going to use it with the myoelectric system. So just something to, to keep in mind. This is the socket that I have here in the lab. Uh, one of the original sockets that I made with Revo way back in, you know, I think, 2010, maybe 2011. Um, but just an adjustable socket with an adjustable electrode sites. This was an arm made by uh, Craig Armstrong. And real oh. quick, I have an, another quick question for you here. Um, any specific criteria when um, prescribing, excuse me, when prescribing the Revo Lock lanyard? Um, well, I mean, it, it depends on uh, the user. So in terms of, you know, when I use the Revo Lock lanyard, it's, you know, people that have a difficulty um, using a mechanical lock, okay? So maybe with, a, with a, using a pin lock, they've got a hard time you know, getting the pin engaged and in, 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 into position. Uh, whether they have the, the, the liner on in the, the correct position in the first place, also an issue with a, with a, with a pin. Um, sometimes with a pin, you know, when they're shoving their arm in, um, you know, it hits the side of the pin and not the hole of the pin. And then it puts pressure back onto the arm. So it can be kind of uncomfortable when they're trying to seat, you know, seat the arm in the socket and, and get it positioned. Um, I like to, you know, I like to pull the limb into position, elongate it a little bit, and get it into the limb. Um, with with the Revo Lock lanyard, you don't really have to think about, you know, is the liner on in the right position? Do I have, you know, the pin, you know, pointed in the right direction? Uh, you simply just turn the dial and it pulls it into position, elongates it and pulls it into place. Um, I also use it a lot if you, if patients have, you know, maybe a more larger or, or bulbous like distal end versus maybe the mid shaft of their of their arm um, so if they've got you know maybe some soft or redundant tissue at the distal end and they have a hard time pushing that into a socket uh, i'd much prefer to pull and elongate that tissue into place rather than them having to try and stuff it in from the top um, you know i often like to use you know for for upper limb if i can use the bony anatomy to create a suspension uh, that's great as well um, you know, whether you're, you're going, you know, above the condyles or, you know, uh, you know, for wrist disarticulation, you've got a, a door or a panel, uh, for donning and doffing, but, you know, creating anatomical locks, uh, bone locks, essentially, uh, I think is a great way to go, uh, for, for upper limb. Um, but sometimes, you know, patients don't want to deal with that. They want low trim lines. They want fast and easy, you know, donning and doffing. Um, or maybe they just simply don't, don't need that much support, uh, you know, to, to have that above the, above the condyles. So um, 
you know, a few different reasons as to why we use that Revo lock. Um, and, and, you know, another great reason is, you know, things not going to come off. Um, you know, I've had patients, had one patient that, you know, uses a pin lock, he's a lower limb, but he was down in, in uh, Brazil. He was there for a month uh, visiting some family. This was a couple of years ago. And he was out surfing and he, you know, he had a pin lock and he hit the pin or hit the, hit the button on the side of the socket while he was surfing and trying to get on the board and his leg, he was just watching it just sink down deeper and deeper and deeper into the ocean. And, uh, you know, he called me and said, oh, you know, lost my leg in the ocean, you know, and he was there for a month. And uh, luckily he had a backup, you know, a spare leg, a shower leg with a stomper on it. So you end up wearing that stomper for, you know, three or four weeks uh, all over Brazil, um, which worked, you know, but, you know, inadvertently hitting that button, especially if you're in the water, uh, that thing's gone. Okay. Um, with a lanyard system, unless you unthread it, there's no way that thing's going to come off. You know, it can, it can release and it can be dangling. There's no way for that arm to ever come off unless you, you know, physically unthread that from the liner. So good and bad there. That means every time you put it on, you have to thread it. You know, so there's a little bit of bad there as well. Uh, or I guess maybe it takes a little bit more time. I'm not going to say it's bad, but um, it's definitely a, a more secure fit uh, rather than, say, you know, just a pin lock. Um, here's an arm that was made by Craig Armstrong. Beautiful design. Um, and this was similar to, uh, in terms of uh, suspension, kind of similar to what we were doing here. Creating a hinge point with the lace. And then these are the closure points. So we kind of a trap door. And we simply do that to create that nice olecranon suspension. Um, in this uh, picture here, um, the dial is mounted, you know, obviously on the forearm, okay. And uh, it's controlling that olecranon suspension posterior. Um, the dial or the, the battery that you're all wondering about, that big Cabela's battery, um, this obviously is not a Mayo because you can look at the TD and see what's going on there. But uh, this was a heated arm. So this guy, I'm not sure if he lived in Minnesota or someplace really cold. Uh, could have been here in Utah. Um, uh, but that was a heating device uh, from Cabela's that, that Craig uh, uh, implanted or integrated into the frame of the socket. So the guy had a nice warm socket. He liked his snowmobile. Uh, he liked to attach that the I think that's a Texas assistive device onto the snowmobile. And then he liked to lock that arm on himself and everything was locked on, you know, and I'm not sure that's a great idea when you're locked to a, you know, a thousand pound, you know, 500 horsepower machine, like uh, maybe not such a great idea. Uh, but that's what this guy wanted. He wanted this thing on there secure, like not going anywhere. So that's what Craig made for him. The, the dial here, obviously Revo fit high power dial. Um, that's mounted to the inner uh, socket. So there's an inner, so he's got a flexible uh, insert here. He's got an inner hard shell, which is, which the dial is, is integrated into. And then he just popped a hole in the forearm for that dial to pop out of so that the patient uh, could have obviously have access to it. All right. So that dial is not uh, integrated into the forearm shell. It's just popped through. It's integrated into the inner shell that you can't really see here. Okay. And this is just used for suspension. And that's what it looks like. Beautiful arm, shiny, just awesome, uh, awesome design and, and great function. Uh, wrist orthoses. Um, I'm not an orthotist, I'm just a prosthetist, so I don't get involved with a whole lot of orthotic uh, applications, but people are using them for splints. Uh, people are using them for uh, um, orthotic spl uh, splinting. Uh, people also use them, uh, they'll use our uh, Revo Flex kit, which is uh, our orthotic kit. They'll use it for um, extension devices. So, uh, um, you know, uh, elbow extension or wrist extension, you know, uh, uh, fighting uh, flexion contractures. Uh, they can use those devices and they can, depending on how you route the, the lace, if you route the lace in front of the, the joint or behind the joint, uh, you can create, you know, flexion or extension. Uh, by turning the dial. So uh, we've seen some of these extension devices used on upper limb and the Shriners um, have, have used them, uh, Sacramento and other places. Um, but uh, uh, just know that you can use our RevoFit and our RevoFlex uh, for some orthotic applications as well. 
kind of a fuzzy picture here, but uh, just wanted to show you that you can use it on leather goods. You know, some, uh, some people are still doing leather. It's quite the craft. Um, you probably see more of this in Europe than we do here in, in the States. Um, we're just not as skilled as some of those uh, European leather masters. Um, but uh, beautiful design, uh, you know, soft leather uh, insert. Uh, and these are sewn in. Uh, we've got sewn in guides. Um, the, the quick fit laser that we sell that's external uh, would have a riveted guide. Um, but we, there's also some sewing guides uh, that are available and you can see them here. This is a quick fit laser um, and it's used for pediatric. So um, again, you know, the, the, the quick fit kit is the small dial. Uh, Revo lock is the mid dial. The Revo fit is the high dial. Okay. So, you know, the, the quick fit small, low power, about 60 pounds of line tension. The, the Revo lock is the mid power dial, creates about 100 pounds of line tension, tension maybe a little bit more. And then the, the Revo fit creates about 220 pounds of line tension, but it's the biggest one. Okay. So if you're doing pediatric or maybe some, you know, really small geriatric patients, uh, upper limb, uh, you can get away with using the quick fit. You know, you're just, maybe you're just using it just for a simple, you know, downing and doffing, uh, opening and closing a little window, um, or creating a little bit of tightness um, for a, a you know, secondary suspension. Um, you can get away with using that quick fit uh, laser. Um, if you're going to use it for a sports arm, for a, you know, a mountain biker, or you know, someone wants a sports arm for, for something, but they don't want the big dial, they want something small, uh, I would not recommend using this for that, okay? It's just not strong enough. Uh, even for, you know, upper limb, uh, you know, if you're doing a sport, there's still a lot of weight that can, you know, be put on the device. Um, so we still recommend using those higher power dials if it's anything sport related. Uh, but if, if it's, you know, someone light, like I said, pediatric, little geriatric person, uh, we, we, do, uh, we do use these uh, um, quick fit laser kits uh, for those applications. This was uh, elbow disartic. This is one of the first uh, arms that we made. This was ba way back in 2010, right after the the, the earthquake in, in Haiti. And this was this was one of the uh, people that we worked with down there, <clears throat> and uh, simply made a a, a, a panel. Um, so we had an opening in the back and a panel in the front, so she could uh, pop it, she could slide her uh, elbow through, uh, and then close it down. <clears throat> Real simple system. Again, we use the small, the small dial because we're just simply opening and closing uh, a panel for donning and doffing. It's not really used for compression uh, or for uh, creating a, a tighter fit. It was just simply used for, for on and off. Here's a fixed elbow um, <clears throat> device, you know, sport related. This is just, uh, as you can see, uh, creating compression in the anterior posterior, okay? so. Pretty easy spot to get to the posterior dial, okay, on the posterior panel, uh, and they're just simply uh, uh, squeezing uh, in the AP. Not sure that's, you know, where I would wanna squeeze in terms of a patient. You know, I don't know if I wanna squeeze on the biceps and the tricep necessarily. Uh, I'd probably squeeze more medial lateral, um, just to kind of, uh, and maybe allow the, the bicep and the tricep to have a place to expand into. Um, you know, we, you wanna, People are, are flexing those muscles to, to control the device. Uh, and I, in my opinion, you kind of want to make some room for those muscles to expand into. Uh, so maybe I'd be squeezing, you know, uh, uh, on the ML sides, not necessarily the AP, but that's just my opinion. Uh, obviously, they, they had a reason for, for squeezing in the AP. Maybe that's what the patient wanted. Or maybe they didn't have muscle there uh, or enough muscle to, to, um, to uh, you know, cause any kinds of issues in terms of bulging or, or uh, muscle uh, um, compression. Uh, so they use the, the RevoFit high power dial here. <clears throat> Obviously it's a, it's a pretty heavy duty use as a full carbon arm um, and must be sport related with the device, the, the terminal device that's on there. Uh, maybe kayaking or rowing or something like that. Um, but just wanted to show you another example of, of uh, the high powered use here. So that's all we've got for upper limb. <clears throat> Hopefully that kind of gave you some ideas about what can be used uh, and how we use them. Again, we're using the Revo Fit Kits for upper limb, the Revo Lock, obviously. You do need to get the separate threaded insert for the Revo Lock. Uh, quick Fit Laser can be used for light duty uh, upper limb. And then our Quick Fit Straps. 
uh, can be used for harnessing uh, as well. So that's all I've got. Um, Look for the link uh, following this webinar. If you want the credits, take the quiz, pass the quiz, obviously, uh, and then we'll give you two credits. Um, if you, anyone has any questions, uh, now is the time to, to raise your hand or to, to, to type it in. Um, if you, you know, something comes up later, uh, you know, after you've uh, thought about this for a while, feel free to reach out to us. You can reach me, Joe, at clickmedical.co. You can call our hotline, uh, call the office, and just go to clinical or technical support. Again, that you're gonna you're gonna get me, um, and happy to to share photos and ideas and designs. A lot of times we get technicians that'll FaceTime us and say, "Hey, you know, I'm getting ready to do this lamination, and and I got the dial here, and you know, how does it all look? And you know, is this gonna work?" And uh, happy to you know jump on and say hey that looks pretty good or you know what I'd move it you know move the dial over a little bit because it's going to interfere with the range of motion of the elbow or the knee or whatever so happy to help uh, you know do live FaceTime stuff I'm um, usually here from 9 to about 4 uh, mountain time um, but you can reach out to us and and leave a message if we don't get back to you uh, and and we'll get back to you same day so um, hopefully uh, this was uh, um, eye-opening for some of you to, to see some different applications and uh thank you if anyone has any questions feel free to use that raise hand feature um or go ahead and use the chat or the q a lots of different options here um let's see let's see we are going to how can we reach you for more specific questions or even facetiming that you had talked about so we will send a follow-up email uh with that'll have joe's contact details so stay tuned uh we'll we'll get that information out to you here shortly that email we do have to just do a few things on the back end so um it will take a couple hours for us to get that uh people had also asked if we are recording this webinar we are um we're not sure if it's going to go into our online um, education platform or not our, our can you adjust platform um, I do believe we will at least put it on there as a recording uh, but we will have that available so um, if you do care for this recording just just contact us uh, in the next day or so we do need to do a little bit of editing um, to get my voice out of there and uh, we'll have that available um, but Bruce you have a question so I am gonna go ahead and allow you to talk here and you should be able to uh, unmute yourself and ask Joe your question. Bruce, do you need me to unmute you there? I'm happy. Let me see. I'm going to see if I can unmute. I am not uh, able to unmute you. So Bruce, if you do have a question, go ahead and uh, unmute there or type your question in if, if there are any technical difficulties there. Does anyone else have any questions for Joe? It could be related to any other advanced designs and techniques to, to lower limb as well. Well, if we didn't get to you today, we will be sending that follow-up email. So feel free to, to contact Joe directly or reply to the email, which is going to come from adjust at clickmedical.co. Again, anyone in the US, there will be a quiz and you can earn two CEUs uh, for joining us today. So if there aren't any other questions, we can wrap this up and uh, go from there. Thanks everybody. Oh, Meyer, Meyer has a question here, so you okay. should be able to talk now. Yeah. Hi, uh, I have a question specifically regarding the lower limb amputees and that too above knee, as they are the ones who suffer mostly from the blisters and the pain. So is RevoFit technology has been useful for them in their day-to-day -day life, I mean, depending on their K levels? Um, yeah, we, we use that's what we mainly use that would be the, the RevoFit for is for lower limb and I'm not going to say specifically for for transfemorals but uh, we see a lot um, I don't know if it's a lot more use for transfemorals but we see quite a bit of use for transfemorals versus transtibials. Uh, transfemorals you know there's a lot more tissue a lot more surface area 
Oftentimes mm -hmm. the leg is much bigger. Uh, people suffer from a lot of different issues with transfemorals from uh, levering, you know, and distal, distal femur pain. So mm -hmm. as, they're, as they're walking, they're levering on the, the medial edge and the femur will, will lever uh, to the, you know, lateral posterior corner as they're walking through gait. Um, and they'll oftentimes get, you know, sores on the distal uh, lateral posterior femur. So what we do oftentimes is we'll put a pad or a adjustable panel just above that distal femur uh, to help mm -hmm. stabilize the limb in the ML position. So we can do a medial panel, we can do a lateral panel, and we can squeeze kind of the mid shaft of the leg uh, and create uh, some compression. So as you can see here, here's a transfemoral. Can you, can you share your screen, Joe? Oh yeah, sorry. It might be a little easier. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Where, where am I here? Yeah, that's fine. That's perfect. Okay. Wait a moment. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, I don't want to share this. Hold on a second. How do I unshare? Stop sharing. All right. Hold on a second. Sorry. Okay. So. Now you can see me, I think. Uh, yeah. So as you can see here, we've got, uh, you know, lateral panel, medial panel, yeah. okay? That's connected to one dial. And then we also have this posterior opening that's, that's uh, also connected to a dial. So we can, tighten, uh, we can tighten this posterior aspect of the socket. Basically, yeah. you can close that gap. So we can tighten the proximal brim of the socket, okay? And then when they sit down, they can release that pressure. And then we can also tighten the mid shaft on a separate system and we can create, you know, kind of a, it'd be hard to see here, but we can create a bit of a bone lock, you know, mm. we've got this panel here that's pushing in uh, and, and, and putting pressure or along the, the lateral side of the femur. We're not putting the pressure on the distal femur where the, where the sore spot is. We're, we're putting the pressure just above it. Okay. Uh, okay. So that's that's yeah. one way of, of doing a transfemoral. Um, let me see what else I've got here. This is a little bit bigger. This is more of a, um, a knee disartic. But again, we've got some panels. This is for downing and doffing, okay, to allow the, the, the condyles to get through the, to the bottom. And then on the uh, uh, posterior aspect of the socket, uh, again, we've got some, some uh, tightening that we can do for the proximal brim. Mm. So that's, this is kind of a, you know, this is all flexible plastic here. Um, this can, this can all okay. flex. Uh, yeah, I got it, yeah. And that's it, and that's a rigid frame. So that's another type of design. Um, let's see. Got one here on a, on a knee. Uh, this is, this is a pretty big guy. He's using a, a seal in. A liner. So here's the valve for the sealant. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is soft rolled silicone. Really mm -hmm. nice. Added, we added some extra silicone here in the brim, the medial brim for, for softness. Yeah. And then he's got an anterior opening here and then also a posterior opening. Okay. So this, mm -hmm. basically this entire lateral wall uh, can, can compress and tighten so we can just tighten yeah. the posterior aspect up, okay? This patient also liked to have um, compression anterior and posterior on the femur, okay? And then we mm -hmm. added this one kind of after the fact, this lateral one, to get, to get the, the femur off this lateral wall. But he liked to squeeze in this anterior posterior compartment. And so you can see on this other dial, mm -hmm. we're able to, to tighten this up. And this rolled silicone is so forgiving that you can really get a lot of compression that way. Um, so those are kind of a, a few examples of, of what we do for transfemorals. Um, I recommend going uh, into our, uh, just signing up, go, go to our Can You Adjust program, just give us your email. That allows you access into like our educational dashboard. And once you're in the educational dashboard, there's a bunch of information, a bunch of webinars, um, advanced designs, there's a bunch of uh, one page PDFs case studies and there's a, there's a okay. handful of lower limb case studies in there that you can look at um, we talk about you know 
the design, how we fabricated it, why we fabricated it, you know, what we learned and what we do different the next time. Um, so there's some really good, you know, educational information in that dashboard. Um, and I'd recommend going there. And, and, and we also have a um, advanced design webinar that we do uh, every so often. Uh, and in that, we talk a lot about transfemerals. Uh, and it's mostly about lower limb. Um, mm. And we've got tons of examples of, of using lower limb for transtibials and transfemerals, hip dysartics, knee dysartics, signs, show parts, et cetera. So uh, I, would, I would encourage you to, to seek that stuff out. Um, in the educational dashboard, you can go to the advanced design webinar and you're gonna see a lot of great lower limb designs there. So I, I recommend you go there and check it out. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you so much. Joe. You're welcome. In our, our follow-up email that we'll get out here today, we'll also have a direct link to um, enroll in our, in our online education to get access to that. It's also available in subtitles, uh, Spanish, French, and German. So, um, so anyone, any internationals joining us today, uh, there are a lot of great offerings there for you guys. So stay tuned, we'll, we'll get that out. Um, and Mayor, did you have any other questions here? I have a couple others coming in, so I wanna ping Joe while we have them on, but if you're, a, if you don't have any other questions, I'll, I'm going to mute Yeah, no, I'm you. fine. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, yeah. perfect. Thank you. And then we do have a, a question that's specific to the scoliosis brace, and we're not really um, in the orthotic side. So, Joe, do you have any recommendations uh, for special designs on the scoliosis brace or anyone we could con um, put out there as a recommendation for um, a contact? Um, I personally have not done any scoli braces. Um, I've seen some uh, people using it for pectus carinatum braces and putting a panel um, uh, to, control, to control that compression. Um, in terms of scoli braces, you know, the, there's a few people that are doing uh, orthotic. Uh, Tilgis is doing quite a bit. Uh, Scott Hinchin, um, I believe he's in Minnesota or Wisconsin. I believe Tilgis is up in Minnesota. Um, You've got, you know, Cornerstone and FabTech on the, on the northwest side. They do a lot of orthotic applications. I think mostly lower limb, though. Um, Does Brittles do the do Brittle, braces? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Reach out so to Rachel. Um, I can connect you with, because um, I know that you're international, so I can find the contact details for Frittles Orthopedic Appliance and get that information over to you. Yeah, I know Rachel has some special uh, uh, schooly uh, braces that um, uses our technology. Um, and, and I would, yeah, highly recommend reaching out to her and getting some, some Perfect. ideas. Yep, I will connect them. And, and, and another question here. Um, sorry, bear with me as I try to make sense of this. Um, RevoFit adjustability and active, active vacuum systems, um, the comparison between the two. Um, you're kind of talking about two different things. So, you know, active vacuum um, is used for a couple different reasons. Uh, a, it's a suspension technique. So um, we see people using elevated vacuum and RevoFit together uh, a lot for a lot of different reasons, but um, you know, elevated vacuum is used for suspension. It's used for, you know, volume management. Um, and it's used, supposed to be used for water evacuation, okay? Um, so mainly are people using it for volume management. Um, the thing with elevated vacuum, at least in terms of how, you know, Autobach and some of the other uh, um, uh, manufacturers teach it is, you're expanding the limb within the socket. You're creating negative pressure and expanding and kind of pulling the tissue to the inner wall of the socket, okay? Um, which helps regulate some of the volume. With RevoFit, we use a flexible insert. So um, we're not really doing that to the same extent, okay? Because the flexible insert can, can, can collapse and, and come in. Um, what we've seen and what we've heard is that people with elevated vacuum, they still lose volume. Okay, it, it, it can help stabilize the limb, but, but people are still losing volume if it's really hot out or they're super active or they're just, you know, uh, heavy volume fluctuators. So people use 
instead of you know elevated vacuum, they say throw a throw a dot in in if you are losing volume, throw a gel dot inside. Well, uh, you can eliminate that by just having a, a, an adjustable rebuild fit socket over the top of it. Okay, so you can do elevated vacuum with our system. You can use it, you know, sealant system. You can do it that way. If you're using elevated vacuum, then you use a knee sleeve. Uh, you can also have a, an adjustable frame. Uh, if you're using a knee sleeve for elevated vacuum, you do need to make sure that the knee sleeve uh, is positioned between the flexible insert and the frame. Okay, you have to create a void in the frame for that knee sleeve to live in between the two. You can't put the knee sleeve over the top of the frame because the frame obviously is going to be cut up in terms of the panels or the adjustability. So you'd have a bunch of air leaks there. So you have to put the knee sleeve in between the flexible and the frame. Uh, but we do see a lot of, a, a lot of uh, cross use in terms of elevated vacuum and Revo fit. People are doing both um, because you know, elevated vacuum can control uh, volume to some extent, but uh, not all, okay? So, so some people still wanna have that adjustability over the top. Uh, to increase compression as well. So you're kind of talking about two different philosophies in terms of uh, elevated vacuum, basically expanding the limb uh, versus Revo fit, which allows us to compress and expand the limb. So what, what I really prefer to talk about is like limb stabilization, fluid stabilization, okay? And if we can have what we call fluid recovery. So in a Revo fit socket, people are active, they tighten it down, they crank it down, it's tight, it's tight, it feels good. But then when they stop and re rest or relax, they can pop the dial and they can expand the socket, allow for fluid to recover back into the limb, okay? And then once they become active again, they can slowly start tightening it down. Uh, I don't think tightening it down all day long is the answer. I mean, we can tighten it down and we can push all the, all the fluid out of the limb, you know, uh, I don't think that's the solution, okay? I think fluid recovery and, and fluid stabilization is, is what we're shooting for. And by having the ability to tighten and compress when we need to, but also have the ability to expand and open the socket up, allow, allow fluid to recover and go back into the limb, I think that's just as important. So there's a lot of research being done up at University of Washington, Joan Sanders Lab, uh, Kate Allen. Uh, they're doing a lot of, lot of research on fluid recovery and the importance of fluid recovery. In the old days, they'd have to take the leg off and allow fluid to come back into the limb, then they could put it back on and kind of start over again. Uh, now, having an adjustable sockets, they can simply pop the dial or release the tension, don't have to take the leg off, they can allow the socket to expand, and they can, they're seeing fluid recovery happening with the socket still on. So I really like that philosophy. I like, you know, uh, uh, fluid stabilization. Um, but to answer your question, you can use our system with elevated vacuum. I think it's a good complement um, to that system, uh, especially for those, those users that still are fluctuating uh, more than what the vacuum can accommodate for. Kind of a long-winded answer, but there you go. Thanks, Joe. Um, and then uh, Charles was wondering if you had any examples of the hip disartic socket. Um, yeah. Uh, if you give me a second, let me just um, close down this PowerPoint and open up another one. So just hold tight here for a second. I got to just go through my stuff here. Thanks, Joe. And while Joe's looking for that uh, hip dysartic example, does anyone else have any other questions? All right. So I will share my screen here. And as you can see, there's a lot of stuff here. Um, and again, we do have the, the case study or the, um, in, in our advanced knowledge base in our online education, we do have PDFs of all of these as well. So we will have the, dis, the hip dysartic as well as a knee dysartic uh, symes. Um, so a lot of great examples um, that are gonna live in that educational platform as well. Yeah, you can see here, we've got some great show part some great signs and we also have a the pre-recorded webinar that's going to cover all this it, it, this entire powerpoint is covered in our pre-recorded webinar on, in that platform as well so we really encourage people to to go there um to get some great information all right here's um uh here are the um sorry where do I... here's a hip dysartic socket here 
uh, using the RevoFit dial. We've got some releasing guides that allows you to open the, 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 the hip up completely and close it. This is kind of the bikini style hip. Um, here's a few other hip sockets. Uh, I like the dial placement here of this hip. I don't, I don't really care for the dial placement here. It's, it's front and center. Um, it's just an awkward place to be having a dial. Um, you sh they probably would have, would have been better to put the dial over here above the hip joint off to the side. Um, and in the, this situation here, we've got, uh, this dial is controlling the anterior and posterior panels. So you get nice AP squeeze on the hip. Uh, on the right side here, this is a kind of a diagnostic or a preparatory hip. Uh, and you can see there's those black tabs are the HP releasing guides, which allows you to fully open and, and close the device. And then they use the dial um, for uh, compression. Um, so there's just a few examples of some, of some hips. Um, yeah, so there you go. Um, this is again is in our advanced design webinar. Um, and I don't know if we have any uh, advanced um, uh, PDFs on hips. I don't think we do, but you can certainly go back to this webinar here um, and, uh, and get some information. At, or you can reach out to us directly and happy to share some slides and stuff of, of hip dysartix. Thanks, Joe. And Felix, yeah. you had raised your hand. Do you have a question there? If so, you are good to go ahead and unmute yourself. All right, I think that's we're, we'll cancel we'll cancel that uh, raised hand there. Does anyone else have any other questions for Joe while we have him on? If not, again, we're sending that follow up email with uh, some some contact details um, as well as information on our online education. So if there aren't any other questions, we may wrap this upper limb webinar up and uh, get on with get on with our day or evening wherever you're located. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Be safe. Thanks everyone. Stay well and uh, we'll, we'll keep in touch and send that email out here shortly.